If you're a pretty ballin' gamer on a budget and looking for a pretty sweet Intel Core i5 CPU without breaking the bank, you've probably considered either the i5-4460 or the i5-6400. They're both very, very similar spec-wise and price-wise. So which one's better? Should you go with the older Haswell platform or the newer Skylake platform? Let's find out in this video. So the Intel Core i5-4460 comes packed with four physical cores, of course, and a frequency of 3.2 GHz, which is turbo boostable up to 3.4 GHz. Turbo boostable? Is that, does that actually like, is that actually a thing? It also comes with six megabytes of L3 cache, but okay. So what about this guy, the i5-6400? Well, apart from being slightly newer and having slightly more efficient, 14 nanometer architecture versus the Haswell 22 nanometer architecture. This guy right here packs four physical cores, but at a stock frequency of only 2.7 gigahertz, which is however turbo boostable up to 3.2 gigahertz. So let's see which one's the all around better CPU. A newer i5 with a slightly lower frequency or the older i5 with the slightly higher frequency. We wanted to get the specs for both of these platforms as similar as possible, and I think we did a good job. On the Skylake platform, we of course have the Intel Core i5-6400 clocked at 2.7 GHz, an ASRock Z170 Pro 4 ATX motherboard, 8GB of PNY Anarchy DDR4 down clock to 2133 MHz, and an ADATA 120GB solid state drive. On the Haswell side of things, we have of course the Intel Core i5-4460 clocked at 3.2 GHz, an ASRock Z97 Extreme 4 LJ1150 motherboard, 8GB of Kingston HyperX DDR3 clocked at 1866 MHz, and the same ADATA 120GB solid state drive. Both rigs were also equipped with the same EVGA 500 w 80 plus power supply and a single Sapphire Radon R9380 4GB graphics card. So you can see that we made things very, very similar. We chose a Z97 motherboard on the Haswell side and a Z170 motherboard on the Skylake side. Now we didn't get the memory to match up just right, but I would like to point out that 2133 megahertz is like the base. That's as low as you can go for DDR4 without underclocking for whatever reason. And 1866 megahertz on DDR3 side of things is fairly consistent. 1600 megahertz is the most common, but 1866 is actually a pretty good little boost from that stock frequency. So I think that we've gotten the two RAM kits as close to each other as possible without severely overclocking the DDR3 and causing operating system stability issues. So 1866 versus 2133, that sounds good enough to me. The first CPU independent test on our list is Cinebench R15, and the scores were very similar between the two. The i5-4460 scored 483, while the i5-6400 scored 505. Running the free 32-bit Geekbench 3 test, we achieved a 4460 single core score of 3252, while the 6400 achieved 3656. Onto the multi-core side of things, the 4460 scored 10,158, while the 6400 scored 11,007. Next, we took a one minute video file and rendered it through Adobe Premiere Pro using the H.264 YouTube 1080p preset. In this case, obviously, the lowest time wins. The i5-6400 was able to shave off an additional 5 seconds that the 4460 wasn't. I would like to throw my personal two cents into the mix on this one, however, and that despite its setbacks, the 4460 did a darn good job. Now onto the thing that I know you definitely care about, and that's gaming performance. So should you expect to see any increase in frame rates with the newer i5-6400? Well, let's find out. First up is Dying Light, a pretty awesome zombie game. It's kind of like GTA V, but throw zombies in there and a pretty cool, slightly cheesy storyline, and there you have it, that's Dying Light. So uh, things turned out a little strange in this particular benchmark. The i5-4460 managed to achieve an average frame rate of 76, while the i5-6400 only managed to achieve an average frame rate of 55. So, um, Something's going on there. Switching gaming genres altogether, if you're a fan of car racing and things of that sort, then the Dirt Rally benchmark might be of interest to you. 
Both processors performed very well in this test, however the i5-6400 does edge out a lead in terms of max frames per second as well as the average, just barely. The minimums however did dip slightly lower for the 6400 and this could just be because the 6400 doesn't turbo boost as high as the 4460 and some of those pretty intense moments, you know, like when you hit a tree or drive completely off the road like I managed to do quite a number of times in that benchmark. We like to save the best for last here in the studio and that's why Grand Theft Auto 5 is the last gaming benchmark on our list. I say this all the time and I'm sorry if this is getting annoying but GTA 5 is very very CPU intensive. So if you're looking to stress your CPU and see just how well it performs and communicates with your graphics card, GTA 5 is the benchmark that you should consider. So how well did both processors do? Well, the i5-6400 definitely definitely is the better processor in this case. The 14 nanometer architecture of the Skylake processor definitely helps out in this regard, but I think what's more important behind the scenes is the DDR4. Faster memory for games like GTA 5 definitely aid in frame per second boosts and even decline. So if you have really low frequency DDR4 or DDR3, you're going to see severe frame per second cuts in games like this. This not only explains the 20% increase in average FPS between the 4460 and the 6400, but also explains the higher max frames per second that you would see in a newer platform, which is why the 6400 received 124 frames per second at its peak, while the 4460 was only able to reach 94 frames per second. Keep in mind that all these games are being tested at just 1080p. I have the presets you know, in the descriptions of the graphs but we're not testing anything in 1440p or 4K or even something like 720p or anything crazy like that, just the standard 1080p. If you are curious, however, about how well the i5-4460 performs when combined with an R9 384GB graphics card in 1440p gaming, you can click the link here and check out the video that I posted, well, a day before this video's posting date. Uh, I think you'll enjoy that video. It is quite the 1440p performer, if I do say so myself, but see for yourself. So this is how I want to conclude the video. I know that I've said a few times that I don't like using PC Part Picker to you know, put together any of my builds or link them in the descriptions because prices change all the time. So I'll put together a PC Part Picker PC and it'll be $600 at the time of its creation and then like a week later it's either going to go up in price or down in price by $20 or $40, something crazy, you know? I'll, I'll strike a deal and then the deal's gone and then that whole PC part picker list is, is ruined for the most part. So uh, that's kind of why I don't like using PC part picker, but in this case I did because I wanted to show you that you could actually put together both of these platforms for almost exactly the same price about $630 for both. So if you're considering purchasing either an i5-4460 or an i5-6400 in at least the United States where the US dollar reigns supreme, I would recommend going with the i5-6400, get the newer platform, take advantage of the Skylake architecture and DDR4. You will see for the most part frame per second increases compared to those of the Haswell equivalents and uh, you're really not going to pay much more for the build. I mean, if you want to just go bare bones, which I really don't recommend, but you know, if you're on a budget and you just want a game and that's really it, you can pick up a Skylake PC for about the same price as a Haswell equivalent at this point in the United States. Maybe not somewhere like Australia. Yeah, see, I mentioned Australia. Hello, my Aussies. Thanks for checking out the video. Um, I'm sorry that PC parts are so expensive on your side of the planet. That is unfortunate. I wish I could do something about that, but maybe someday. But that goes without saying. If Haswell is significantly cheaper where you live, the, the performance gains for Skylake aren't really going to be justified in that case. Just purchase a Haswell i5 like this rig behind me, you're going to play games just fine. But if you can put together a Skylake build for the same price as a Haswell equivalent, purchase a Skylake rig. It's just, just makes more sense in most games, except for Dying Light, which is still Still a little confusing, but uh, we'll address that maybe in a future video. Like I said, leave a comment in the description if you think you know why that happened. I still can't explain it. I reran that benchmark three times, um, and I, I just took the, the third benchmark because they were all pretty much the same. The i5-4460 took the cake in all three instances by about the same margin, so 
It is a little strange, but that's why we call this Science Studio. This is about trial and error. It's about experimenting and trying to explain the results that you get. You know, trying to make sense of it all. So if you think that you know why those things happen, leave comments below. We appreciate it. I would sure like to know why. I think I have an idea, but I don't want to say anything that's incorrect and that people bite my head off in the comments below. I'll spare that. Speaking of comments, be sure to leave one suggesting future videos, things like that. Let me know if you think we did a good job. Be sure to leave a like if you like the video, a dislike if you dislike the video, and subscribe for more. I like building computers and stuff. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.